When John Gunther stopped by Davenport, Iowa 30 years ago to research his book, Inside USA, he came up with just one observation. Davenport, he said, has railroad yards and a button factory, period. But when Haywood Hale Broon just stopped by Davenport, specifically at the Palmer College of Chiropractic, and he found the championship caliber athletes. D.D. Palmer, the pioneer chiropractor, has the leonine head of that Jovian figure, an English headmaster. It's therefore fitting that the college which bears his name and teaches his specialty should enjoy success in the sport which headmasters have loved since the days of Tom Brown's school days. In the classrooms of Palmer College of Chiropractic, student practitioners and student patients seem both to be always preparing for some strenuous game or repairing the damages of one. The sport at which they excel is rugby, named for Tom Brown's school, and as typically English, in its habit of playing a cold weather game in warm weather clothes, in its inexplicable relish for bumps and bruises. The Palmer students, zealous missionaries for chiropractic, regard the game as a chance to carry the message through the ranks of the unenlightened. Do they take you seriously? Uh, a lot of places just ask, where, where's it at? I've never heard of it. I have uh, become rather fired up at various comments thrown at us from spectators from other schools. What kind of comments, if they can be spoken on television? Well, they tend to call us quacks and their ignorance from time to time, and uh, we've been referred to as get those foot doctors. Tradition says that rugby was created almost a century and a half ago by another denigrator of the foot, a soccer player who picked up the ball and ran with it. And as played by Palmer against the University of Michigan last weekend, it hasn't varied much from its first rules, still being a swirling game in which what looks like an American football with mumps may be kicked carried or passed sideways or backwards to the end of a try or touchdown worth four points or a sort of field goal worth three. Turnovers emerge from the scrum, a kind of schizophrenic centipede from which the ball emerges into the hands of anyone unwise enough to pick it up. The 15-man teams run almost without let-up through 35-minute halves which produce enough contusions to make the game an open-air laboratory for an aspiring chiropractor who, if he hasn't time to adjust a spine, can at least lend a hand to restoring life to a leg. As disarmed as the lion from whose paw Androcles took the thorn, the Wolverines of Michigan succumb to Palmer's pick em up and knock em down technique by a score of 24 to 4, then joined chiropractors turned choristers in that traditional rugby finale, the beer party. Oh, blimey, I don't want to join the Palmer pushed on the next day to Michigan State and the game in what is described as perfect rugby weather, a cool drizzle, the kind of day the country of origin produces in profusion. Palmer has had enough of such days of good weather and good rugby to win two national championships in the last three years. And even this year when they didn't win, they became the first college of chiropractic ever to defeat Notre Dame. On this day, the beards, the mutton chops, and the gray-green day made the whole thing look as if Tom Brown's housemasters were ridding themselves of academic rust. A chiropractor's hands are his instruments, but like a violinist given an oboe, a spinal adjuster given a bandage is inclined to create a dressing that seems more to have been thrown on than fastened on. Michigan State took the palm from Palmer in a close and bruising game, filled with enough falls to line up 30 spines for realignment. To American football fans, used to the extensive armor of our behemoths, this carnage in underwear has an air of glorious madness. Afterwards, looking like a retreating army, winners and losers lined up for another rugby tradition, a double gauntlet of handshakes in the best tradition of well-played old man. The beer was almost instant this time, and the teams, which had obviously developed more than a one-beer thirst, surrounded the barrel like bears around a honey tree. The brewing industry, ever alert for examples of dashing dehydration to use in ads, may, upon seeing this scene, decide to publicize Palmer refreshing itself 
in the hope of encouraging emulation at the tap and with the tangential effect of doing missionary work for chiropractic, which would crack D.D. Palmer's bronze beard into an approving smile. This is Haywood Hale Brune in Davenport, Iowa.